things, we dedicate this program, The Dam Busters, presented by the author himself, Paul Brickhill, dramatized by Morris West, an Australasian radio production. This is Paul Brickhill. Cheshire had been pondering some new marking ideas. Remembering Martin's experiences at Anteor and his own difficulties in later raids, it seemed to him that Lancaster's were too big and clumsy for marking, too big a target for the flak, and too clumsy for manoeuvring low over pinpoint targets. I had your memo, Cheshire. It interests me very much. It happens to coincide with a few ideas of my own. You're in agreement with low-level marking, then? If it can be done economically, yes. Then, well, I, I, I've got something to add to those memos, sir. Why not let us do our own marking? With our own mosquitoes? Well, that's not very far away from my own thoughts, Cheshire. Oh, I'm glad to hear that, sir. You see... If we could get a batch of mosquitoes allotted to 617, we could train some of the boys in marking technique and, and not be dependent on pathfinders. Yes, if we could do that, I'd feel much happier about low-level technique. Uh, there is a problem, of course. What's that, sir? We've got to get the mosquitoes first. <laughs> well, that, that, that should be simple enough. We, we don't want many. My dear chap, I'm afraid you haven't the faintest idea of what goes on in the high levels of the service. All the mosquitoes that are coming off the production lines have been earmarked for months ahead by the pathfinders, light bomber groups, intruders, and all sorts of other informations. And even they're squabbling about them. But damn it all, sir, 617's not just an ordinary bomber squadron. My dear chap, some of our big brass regard every squadron as a number and nothing else. I know it's crazy, but well, that's the way it goes. And when you get into conference on a matter of dispute like this, every formation commander is crowing at the top of his voice to tell the air ministry that his is the biggest dunghill of the lot. Well, have you talked to Air Chief Marshal Harris, sir? Yes, I have. He's not unsympathetic, which is a lot to say for Bert, but he's a thorny character to deal with, and it takes a long time to get him moving on a new project. Would it help if we could lay some proof in his lap? It would help a hell of a lot. What do you suggest? Look here, sir. If you could get your hands on even two mosquitoes, big Bodo or steal them. Then we could plan a couple of operations and really have something to show Harris. Uh, yes, I, I see the point, but even to get to those blasted things will take a few weeks' work. However, leave it to me, I'll wangle it somehow. Meantime, I've got another job for you. What's that, sir? Uh, there's an explosives factory at Bergerac in Gascony. It's on the banks of the Dordogne. It's not a difficult target, but it's well defended. Low level again? Definitely not. And I mean it this time, Cheshire. I don't want you to risk good crews until we get our mosquitoes. And then you'll have to risk them. Is that understood? Yes, sir. We'll, we'll stick to that. When do we go? If the weather holds, tomorrow night. <laughs> Met reports indicate that the weather will hold tonight, so we're going out. We take off at 21.30. Uh, check your watches. Um, 1,800 hours in 10 seconds from... No. Check. 
Check, check, check. Right. Right. Now, now, for reasons which I'm not at liberty to disclose to you yet, we'll not be using low-level technique on tonight's operation. Yes, well, we, we've got a clear night, and it should stay that way over the target. I'll come in first and mark for you from 5,000. You'll come in in this order. Munro first, then Shannon, McCarthy, and Clayton... One member to captain. Target coming up to port now, sir. I see it. Nice and clear. There'll be flak about gunners. Give me radio, Wappy. You're on, skipper. This is leader. Target coming up to port. Conditions clear. Watch for flak. I'm going straight in. Over. Hang on to your hats. Captain to Bullmamer. Leveling out now. It's all yours. believed it if I hadn't seen it, Skipper. When Munro came in on top of you, the whole place lit up like a fireworks display. <laughs> Shannon owes me a drink for that. Happy to pay it, boy. Happy to pay it. As far as I could see, Davy, you and Mac must have hit an explosive dump. You were right off the line of the buildings, but, well, whatever you hit went up like a volcano. Bunny Clayton came in over the top of that. He put his done right in the center of the explosion. Seems an awful waste, Skipper. Can we go to bed now? I'm tired. Bed, bed. Who wants to go to bed? I want a drink. Hey, uh, look, uh, don't forget to uh, phone your wife. Yeah. Oh, Caesar, I almost forgot. Line one up for me, boys. It won't be long. Yeah. Okay, another drink over <laughs> Cheshire speaking. Uh, hello, this is Cochrane. I got your report last night. Very nice work. Will it help us, do you think? I think it'll help us a great deal. 
I want you to pack an overnight bag, then fly down and pick me up at headquarters. Oh, uh, well, what's doing, sir? We are going down to have dinner with Harris. And uh, I think that by the time we get to the port, he might be ready to talk about a couple of mosquitoes. <laughs> The trouble today, Cookie, is that there's no grace left in war. You remember when we were in Iraq in the first show? Yes, they only do well. But there were some things about Iraq I'd rather forget. <laughs> yes. They seem to remember some sort of an international incident. She was a uh, Russian, wasn't she? I have an uncomfortable memory, too. Remember? Well, it was different, different altogether. She wasn't married. <laughs> well, uh... It sounds as if I'm I'm right out of my class, gentlemen. Hey, don't it? You're just young, that's all. More brandy. Uh, no, no, thanks, sir. Sure, sure. What makes you think you can mark from North Feet in Mosquito and get away with it? The fact that we can mark from North Feet in a Lancaster. We can, you know. We've done it repeatedly. The only thing is that the Mosquito is faster and nippier. Gives us a reasonable chance in the face of heavy opposition. Yeah. What do you think, Coggy? Exactly the same as Cheshire. The boys can mark accurately from zero, but with heavy flak, it's sheer murder. I believe that with a mosquito, we can have a go at any target under the sun and mark within 20 yards accuracy. You see, I studied these last operations of yours with a lot of care. I believe you can do what you say. Now, uh, tell me what you think of this one. You ever been to Munich, Cheshire? No, sir. I've always wanted to plaster it properly, but I've never succeeded. Why not, sir? Because the hellhole has got 400 heavy guns. <laughs> That's one for your quarter, Cheshire. You think you could mark that from zero and get away with it? With mosquitoes? Yes. Now, just a minute, Cheshire. I agree you could probably do that, but I never like doing a thing expensively if it can be done cheaply. What do you mean, sir? I mean that the proper way to do this is to get your two mosquitoes, take them out in some practice operations where there aren't 400 guns, then you'll know exactly what you can do with them. Yes, sir. I can see that. So long as we get the mosquitoes. You're a stubborn devil, aren't you, Tisha? All right. I'll get you two mosquitoes on loan for a month. If at the end of that time you can mark Munich accurately for me, I'll let you keep them. As always, when he was gripped by a new idea, Cheshire was on tenterhooks until the mosquitoes arrived. But eventually they did, and he wasted no time in taking one up for a flip with McCarthy. Like a bird, Skipper, like a bird. A bit different from the Lanx, Mac. And how? Look here, I'm going to try the old dam's technique. Dive from 1850, then flatten out over the target and pull her straight up again. And I, I want you to try a practice drop. Okay, Skipper. Circling now. Going down, Mac. Going down. You 
no Cochrane, Bennett. Of course. Bennett, uh, this is Cheshire 617 Squadron. Bennett is Chief of Pathfinder Forces, you know. I- I'm happy to meet you, sir. Right. Let's get down to business. I have called you here today, gentlemen, as a result of direct instructions from Cabinet. The Germans have been pushing forward at great speed with rocket and long-range gun bases just over the channel. Intelligence reports indicate that these weapons are being trained on London and the invasion ports. The speed of the building operations has quite shocked Cabinet. And, uh, to put it quite briefly, unless the installations are smashed before the rockets are completed, London will be reduced to a heap of rubble. And our plans for a second front in Europe will be seriously disrupted. I don't exaggerate. The situation is so serious that the Prime Minister is calling for twice-daily intelligence reports. What sort of weapons are these rockets, Bert? Oh, we've had varying reports. Some of them suggest that the actual weight of explosive in the warhead will be over ten tons, and that the rate of production is something over a thousand a week. Personally, I doubt that. But we've got to provide against it. What have we got to hit them with? And the only thing is this uh, tall boy of Wallace's. You know, the earthquake job. But that won't be ready for some time. And more than that, when they are ready, they'll have to be dropped from 18,000 feet if they've got enough speed up to penetrate 20 feet of concrete. Pinpoint from 18,000 feet? Well, that's a tall order, sir. Yeah, it's even taller than you know. The installations will be so well camouflaged that a bomb aimer will have trouble getting them in his bomb site even in the daytime. There's another thing. These tall boys will take an awful lot of production. They're very slow to make, and we won't have any to waste. So we get back to the marking problem again, hmm? Yeah, that's right, marking. That's why I've called you here today. I should tell you quite frankly that the pathfinders are not equipped to mark as accurately as that. Damn it all, Bennett. They've got to mark. No use saying one thing and meaning another, Bert. Pathfinders are not equipped for the job. Well, I... I'd like to suggest, sir, that as 617 will be doing the bombing, we should do the marking as well. What makes you think you can do it if the Pathfinders can't? Well, sir, Pathfinders have been trained to mark from high and medium levels. There isn't time to alter the training. 617, on the other hand, have all been trained in low-level technique. Why can't it be done from medium level? I'll tell you, sir. You'd have to run up straight and level. At that height, the searchlights would blind you so that you, you couldn't see the target. And the flak would be pretty sure to cut you to pieces anyway. Well, I think, sir, that we could mark it at very low level in a diving attack. Not in the Lancasters? No, sir, not in the Lancaster. In a mosquito. I- I've been trying out the two we've got on loan. They're so fast we could be in and out before the defences could nail us. I don't agree, Cheshire. The mosquitoes are fast, but not all that fast. You'll have enormous casualties. Mosquitoes are my job, I ought to know. Low level is my job, sir. In any case, if you don't do it my way, I don't see there's any other way you can do it. Uh, Well, looks like a stalemate. There can't be a stalemate. However we do it, however much it costs, the job's got to be done. If it's not done, London will be flattened and the invasion ports turned into a shambles. Well, Benit... It's not a job for the Pathfinders. All right, leave the Pathfinders out of it. That puts it back to your boys, Cochrane. We'll get down to it right away, sir. Anything more to say, Cheshire? No, sir, we're training on mosquitoes now. Give us another fortnight and we're ready for whatever job you can't hand out. We've really bought ourselves a job this time, Jetta. <laughs> I know that, sir. But, you know, I'm certain we can do it. Still, I... I would like to know more about this new bomb of Wallace's. Yes, yes I, I was thinking about that. You know, it might be an idea for you to go down to Weybridge and um, talk to him about it. I'll go down tomorrow. You'd better give me some sort of a letter of authorization. Yes, well, come back now and have dinner with me. I'll give you the letter before you leave. Uh, by the way, I believe you had visitors the other day. Oh, you mean the Yanks? Yes, top brass. Spouts and Doolittle. 
You know, I, I couldn't quite get used to the idea of calling them General. <laughs> uh, by the way, I, I, I've got a bet on with General Sparks, by the way. And what's the bet? A hundred dollars even money that we can't land a bomb in a pickle barrel. <laughs> you know, Cheshire, that's just about what you'll have to do to these rocket sites. I think the sooner you talk to one is the better. Mr. Wallace, I, I thought you'd be able to tell me something about the effects of this bomb on concrete installations. Well, you know, my dear chap, I, I hadn't really designed it for concrete. So I, I think it might not be a good thing to drop them on the roofs of the blockhouses. They might bounce off again, you know, like corks. Oh, might they? Why, I hadn't thought of that. The proper thing to do is just to drop them down at the side. In the earth, you see. Then they'll blow the sides in. Yes, sir. Blow the sides in. Germans are very foolish, you know. <laughs> now, if, if I were building those blockhouses... I'd make the sides much thicker than the top. I see the point, sir, of course, but we will be 18,000 feet up. 18,000 or 1,800, it doesn't matter. Oh. The fact remains that the most vulnerable part of the blockhouse is the side. Now, got a moment to spare? Here. Now, have a look at this diagram. Yes, sir. Now, if you can drop your bomb so that its nose comes right here... The point of this pin, mm. down the side. Yes. The side of the blockhouse, not uh, on top. Yes, of course. <laughs> the effects will be quite devastating. Quite devastating. Yes, I, I, I understand that, Mr. Wallace, but I want you to look at it from our point of view. We'll be 18,000 feet up in the air. Well? Well, that's more than three miles up. Yes. Well... Uh, from that distance, the blockhouse itself will be just a, a small speck. It's it's one thing, you know, to stick a pin in a diagram. It's quite another to drop a bomb within two feet of the target. Oh, well, if I'd known you wanted to scatter the bombs around the countryside like, like grass seed, I'd never have bothered to design them. Gentlemen, the AOC. Tonight's operation is an important one from several points of view. It, um, it marks the end of a training period during which we have been trying to make this squadron completely independent of other formations. In other words, you will mark for yourselves with mosquitoes and you will bomb for yourselves. <laughs> it's important from another point of view, too. If this operation is successful, you will be given larger and more important targets. Your commander and myself have committed ourselves, and you, to certain guarantees. I... I feel sure you won't disappoint us. Uh, your target for tonight is here. Uh, Toulouse, in the south of France. It's a large aircraft factory, reasonably well defended. Now, these blow-ups here show the location and contours of the target. The weather's fine. You shouldn't have any difficulty in getting onto the target. Cheshire will mark for you in a mosquito. He'll come in at deck level. The rest of you will bomb from 10,000 feet. Oh. Happy days, Skipper. Yeah, luck, Skipper. Well, that's all I have to say to you. But there is one final point. I'll be in the operations room myself tonight, and if I get the news I want, I'll be one of the happiest men in England. I'm not free to tell you what all this is leading up to, but 
I can tell you, it will be the greatest thing you have ever done. Good luck, chaps. Safe home. the time. Five minutes off to zero, sir. Yes, uh, we should have words through shortly. Yes, sir. Yeah. What's going on? The old man's as jumpy as a cat tonight. Yeah, don't know why it should be. It's just a, just a routine job. Yeah, uh, there, there was some talk of a new technique. Yeah, I'd always tried out new techniques. Don't mean a thing. Uh, things are getting duller at... Hey. Here it comes now, sir. Yes, I... I can read it, but... There's far below. Repeat. There's far below. They've done it! They've done it! 